Dan, Dan in New York. Uh, Dan in New York, pronouns are he, him. And Dan has a question for you specifically, Christy. He's wondering mm -hmm. about uh, sex addiction. I will let Dan speak for himself. Dan, you're on the line. Hey, what can we help you with? Uh, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, Christy, I believe, unless I'm mistaken, it was you that I saw on uh, another show with Matt, and you made sort of an off-the-cuff comment about sex addiction not being real because it was sort of adjacent to the topic, but then you let it slide. And I... It sounds like the type of thing I would say, so curious. probably me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to get some clarification on that because, like, maybe it has to do with the the definitions of the words that we're using here. Because in, in my mind, when I if I'm using the word addiction, I'm, I'm not using it in a like this is in the DSM kind of way. I'm just thinking like a a thing that a compulsive thing that you do that um, routinely despite negative consequences. So, like, for yes, example, and personally. Uh, mm -hmm. I play Tetris a whole lot. There's a whole Tetris community on the internet. I play it probably too much. I should probably do a little less and do a little more like actual work. And in my mind, I would describe myself as having a Tetris addiction. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, um, I would imagine that like there are some people who are compelled to find people to have sex with to the point where it's giving, it's detrimental to their, their life and has, you know, good amount of negative consequences. So, is that not sex addiction? Like, what, what were you saying? Yes. So I, uh, I agree with and I'm on board more or less with everything that you've just said. Uh, but I want to challenge you to change what you're doing because you're right. This does come down to linguistics. This does come down to how we use that word addiction. Uh, I have uh, myself like a, a video and a series of resources that I've put together on the idea that porn is like golf. So as you're comparing it to Tetris, I'm totally on board that uh, sex can become problematic. We can make mistakes. We can uh, have sex get in the way of our regular lives. Sex can feel very out of control and we can make huge mistakes. Lives have been destroyed by our sexuality. So I'm not dismissing those problems. But when you say that addiction is anything that you do, despite the fact that it's causing a problem in your life, what I want you to do is stop using that word that way. The word addiction doesn't mean that, and we shouldn't be using it that way. Uh, and there are so many reasons why that's the case. I'm going to in particularly uh, point you towards the work of, um, oh, forgive me, uh, Douglas Baum Harvey. I'll, I'll look that up and, and make sure to have something in the show notes for this episode. Uh, but it is true that sexuality can feel very out of control, that we can feel as if our sexuality is not under our control. And so it makes sense that people want to gravitate towards these uh, pathologizing metaphors and that we want to describe it as an addiction. But the addiction process is a medical one that just doesn't apply here. And that language, I think, robs people of their agency. I think it unnecessarily pathologizes healthy human sexual behaviors. And I think that it just muddies the waters in ways that are really unhelpful and unnecessary. I, I see where you're coming from, but I guess I, you, you, you want people to use the term in, in that kind of way because of all the reasons that you just said, which totally makes sense. But in terms of like, how people use it in the vernacular. I, before this call, I was just looking up like Merriam-Webster's definition for it. And it, it seems to be pretty vague and allows for a, like legitimate um, physiological uh, types of addictions and as well as just something that is psychological or like strongly inclined to do something repeatedly is one of the definitions on Merriam-Webster. So, how, how can we, I guess, uh, given that these are like the ways that the word is, is used, maybe we should come up with a different kind of descriptor. I mean, in the same way that in the atheist community, there's like strong, weak, you know, uh, and, you know, all those types of terms, like maybe there's a, some better ways of differentiating these two types in your mind. 
I mean, per perhaps, and I don't mean to set myself up as the arbiter of how of what words mean or how words should be used. Uh, I think I've gone on record a, a number of times saying that people don't have that right, that we culturally, we as a society get to decide what a word means. And a word just means whatever somebody else understands it to mean. So I, I am very sympathetic towards your ideas here, Dan. But my concern is that insurance companies are using the term addiction to mean something specific, that medical professionals mm. are using the word addiction to mean something specific. And when we as sort of the general population, when we as a culture uh, adulterate that word, we rob it of its power, we muddy the waters and we create meaningful problems. There are significant issues. There are things that happen to people who are struggling with out of control sexual behavior because we culturally use the term addiction. And when you casually refer to yourself as being addicted to Tetris, you're doing a disservice both to people who have out of control sexual behavior and to people who are struggling with withdrawal from heroin. I don't mean to come down on you in particular. This is a large scale cultural problem that's being propagated and propped up by a for profit addiction treatment industry. It's a huge, huge, huge problem. And I am not myself qualified to get into all of the particulars of it. But I'd really encourage you to investigate the works of, uh, of Dr. David Lay. Uh, his book, The Myth of Sex Addiction, I think is incredibly compelling and talks about how there are for-profit industries that are making us have this confusion very much to the detriment of our society. Uh, I would refer you to uh, Douglas Braun Harvey and his book, uh, Out of Control Sexual Behavior, where he details the uh, large scale problems that are uh, that are caused in people's lives when we try to use the same model to refer to something uh, like Tetris or like pornography that we would use to describe uh, heroin or cocaine and things like that. It causes a lack of a it uh, robs people of their agency. It demonizes healthy sexual behaviors and it's systemically concerning in many, many, many ways. So in those people that you're referring to, are they providing alternate ways of dealing with, you're using, and you're using this term out of control of sexual tendencies or behavior, I forget which one. Is there another method that's not the addiction-based method that deals with those people, like some other t tool that you're referring to? Yes, yeah, there are uh, much better models than the addiction model. Uh, there are absolutely ways to understand these problems. Look, I, I'm a sex therapist. People come to me all the time. I mean, probably a quarter of the people who are referred to my agency come to me saying, I am a sex addict and I wanna work on that. And I don't rob people of that adjective. It's not my right to take it away from them, but I do let them know, hey, if you're gonna be working with me, just know that I'm not going to use a addiction treatment orientation. There are certainly wonderful and talented professionals that would watch this video and think that I'm a fool. And uh, to them, I say, you know, fuck off. You're just trying to make a buck. But, you know, there are very valid uh, arguments to be had in this sphere. And I acknowledge that while also wanting to highlight the damage that's being done by insisting on using that sort of lazy vernacular and by buying into that medicalized, pathologizing type of lens. So one last thing, and then I'll, I'll head out. What word, if someone comes into your office saying, I'm a sex addict, what word would you prefer them to use? What would make for a better uh, environment? For yeah, I would love for somebody who is having sexual problems to say that they're having sexual problems. You know, when somebody is in a uh, monogamous marriage and they have sex with somebody that they are not married to, we say that they are having an affair, that they're having marital issues, that they're having marital problems. We don't diagnose that person as being addicted to sex. 
And when somebody loses their job because their values were such that it was more important to them to look at pornography on their work computer than to you know, honor the values and the rules of that organization, we should be referring to that as a problem. We can be talking about mistakes. We can be talking about you know, uh, values that aren't serving somebody. There are so many individualized things that we can consider in an individual's life that might lead them to have an unhealthy relationship with sexuality. But to think of it in terms of an addiction, to think about it in terms of having a withdrawal component, to think about it in terms of having it override the pleasure centers in our brain, which just as a very quick aside, I, I know we're getting really far afield, but anytime you hear somebody say, the pleasure centers in our brain don't like take everything they're about to say with a grain of salt that type of language where people look at like an mri and they say oh well it lights up when people look at uh, pornography the same way it lights up when they have cocaine it's just such a dramatic oversimplification and the lack of nuance is hurting people. It is destroying marriages. It is destroying lives. It is undoubtedly leading to suicide and death that could be prevented. And I, and I have to say, the only reason we're having this conversation, Dan, in my opinion, is because of a concerted effort by for-profit sex addiction treatment centers to push a particular narrative. And I, uh, and I just want to push back. I mean, this show was very much founded on that idea. I think that uh, we've had Dr. Daryl Ray on this show a number of times to talk about the myth of sex addiction. And I would encourage you to investigate it further. I have some great resources on this subject that I will make sure are in the show notes to this episode uh, so that I'm not just speaking off the cuff. And you can actually kind of do your own research and, and investigate for yourself a little bit. Oh, well, that was very thorough. Thanks a lot, Christy. Appreciate it. <laughs> I, I hope it helped. I didn't mean to get all worked up, but thank you so much for asking <laughs> the question. No, no, no problem. Take care. Yeah, have a great have night. A good one. All right. Uh, Laura. I kind of I kind of blanked out. Where are we at now? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a message from the crew. Apparently that counts as our lunch break. <laughs> oh, perfect. I'm sorry. Okay. Didn't need one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I had a sip or two of my tea. I'm good. Let's let's press. <laughs> okay, perfect. No, but, um, but we do have. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Laura. I was gonna say, can we can we stay on this subject for like just one quick more second? Because I have sort of a follow up question for Christy that I think might help the caller and maybe the audience. But the difference between habits and addictions, right? And the whole time you were talking, I'm thinking habit, 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 mm. right? And I was wondering if you could like um, kind of elaborate on that just a little bit. Like, would you consider that more of a habit? And, and address it in those terms. <laughs> well, I uh, so I guess to, to pull back the curtain a little bit, uh, I had been in talks with somebody who is something of a addiction expert that I was hoping would come on to the show and talk to us about uh, sort of the distinction between uh, what we might call a uh, chemical addiction, uh, something you know like heroin or cocaine or, or these different things versus a process addiction. Uh, and that term process addiction is not super within like my field of study or my area of expertise. I definitely don't want to dismiss anybody who uh, feels that they are unable to stop gambling. I don't want to dismiss the feelings of somebody who feels like they are unable to control certain behaviors. But using that same addiction mindset or that same model is really problematic and it just doesn't align with the facts on the ground there are meaningful problems here like people have bad habits but often those habits could be better understood through a lens of uh, anxiety of a lens of avoidance and through a more like standardized psychological framework than something that entails a uh, chemical withdrawal process yeah, big time. Well said. 